Hello and welcome to Confession, a visual novel developed by Frozen Iris, available on Itch.io. And apparently, you confess to your bully victim on a kind of like a dare, you know, it's supposed to be a prank, but then he accepts. So now it's awkward, you know, and I guess we'll see what happens. Um, this game is not tagged as horror necessarily, but it does seem to have some disturbing elements, you know, just judging from the game page. So viewer discretion is advised. All right, let's begin. You know, and also, I'm not sure of the name of the game, by the way. You know, it also says Pass Hope in the main menu, if you saw there. Uh, the, the original, you know, Chinese title apparently is just something else. I don't know. I just say it's Confession because of the game file. That's what it says. And uh, hello, uh, Azriel, by the way. All right. So let's begin. I'll start off uh, with recalling what I can remember. Today was the day I decided to confess. This is probably a little bit of a dramatic way to start off, huh? What is my name? Okay, I'll just say, I mean, I'll just say Spider. Even though apparently it says here in the game page, uh, the protagonist is not a good person. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> or yeah, it, it says, I don't know. I don't know if I want to be associated with the protagonist in that case, but oh well. I'll just use, you know, my name. It was noon. I was at the rooftop waiting while gazing at the light blue sky above. But an average yet classic place to confess to someone. Um, I have feelings for you, so can you go out with me? Ooh. The boy stared blankly, his face gone deathly pale. I could only describe it as if he'd seen a ghost in broad daylight. Okay, if I'm being honest, that ghost he was seeing was me. And he has like, I don't know, Medusa hair? <laughs> you know, that's what it looks like to be. It's like, it's like snakes. Um... With you? Yes. So what you mean by go out with you is you want me to date you? That'd be right. Would that mean that you're confessing to me? Exactly. After confirming the meaning of my statement over and over again in pure disbelief, he leans against the rooftop's railings. His face drops of that same gloomy expression he always seems to be wearing. Those crimson red eyes of his first look towards the sky, then treaded towards the ground, never truly meeting with my own. I'm sorry, Hoshino. I didn't mean it to feel forceful. I didn't feel. I didn't mean to force you. I don't know. With my eyebrows creasing what appeared to be worry, my mouth awkwardly smiled with a taste of bitterness hidden behind it. To anyone looking upon us from the side, they assume that I truly cherish him and I like him all my heart. To me, however, it felt like at that moment that he couldn't possibly return my confession. It's practically impossible for a normal person to accept a confession of some horrible person who bullied them every day after all. Huh. Ah, jeez. With this kind of silence, it went exactly how I expected. Now, uh, could you just reject me already so I could get this embarrassment over with? I see. After school, we should hang out together then. With his calm and soft tone, you expect us to be close enough to be exchanging friendly greetings such as good morning and good afternoon with each other. The strange thing is, we are by no means on those kind of friendly terms with one another at the current moment. Wait, what did you say? Now it's my turn to question my sanity. In just a few moments, the mask which hid my true feelings seemed to shatter in an instant. Crap. This was a big mistake. Shouldn't he have told me something along the lines of I don't want to date you or stop pretending to have feelings for me and then ignore me with the same emotionless expression? To sum up what just happened, I'll start with this. I'm. Slider, <laughs> a simple high school student. Today I confess to the victim of my own bullying. Okay, so interesting premise. This guy, yeah, no, I've heard of that. I mean, sort of. Well, I mean, the first time I heard of it, it was like in Danganronpa, <laughs> but, uh, but it's like apparently like it's it's a common prank. I don't know, it's common. I don't know, but it's a type of prank where you just pretend to like confess to someone, you know. Like, you got dared by your friends, you know, to, like, confess to someone, but you don't really mean it, I guess. It's like a weird prank, I feel like. Well, I don't know. i never seen it in real life, but apparently uh, I, I've seen it mentioned, I guess. But yeah, but it's, it's kind of like that, except uh, the victim actually accepts. <laughs> it's like, it's just weird now. Uh, although I was the one who confessed my feelings, I didn't really expect Hoshino would be able to return them so easily. How troublesome. 
It was time for school. The light peered in from the window shedding, its ever radiant light upon the floors of the hallway. Other students surrounding me would joyfully laugh and banter with one another, each telling different random and little stories about themselves brought to mind to the people around them. Music is a little low. I'm gonna turn it up. It was like a little lower before. I, I already turned it up. I'm gonna turn it up at maximum. Why, why, is, why is game volume, you know? Why, why is developers don't make their games loud enough, you know? They're always too quiet. Uh, to me, whenever I chatted with someone else, it felt like all we do is argue about meaningless topics and such. I hate Slider. Yeah? Gosh, I tried to get your attention several times already, you know? I'm kind of tired because I stayed up all night preparing for the exam. Issue is, I can never seem to remember half of what I'm learning. So I thought a little studying might help. Turning his head to look at me while I began talking, the simple-minded student merely watched as I finish up my sentence. I suppress my anger festering inside of me as I maintain my outgoing and welcoming appearance. Mask threatening to rip at the seams. Okay, that's a very psychotic thing to say. I've been really out of it lately. But it's not for some mature reason like studying all night. Rather, insomnia always makes me stay awake at night. I'm not surprised that you're the top student after all. But do be careful to eat a little more. You're losing a lot of weight. Sorry to worry me. Did you fail in PE class yesterday? It was this morning too. You lost that bet because you were in such a daze. Also, you're not really going to confess to that pathetic piece of trash, are you? <laughs> I love being a bully and being mean to certain students. It's great. Now, um, I smile. If my classmates discovered Hoshino and I were dating all of a sudden, it would attract a lot of unwanted attention. Besides, the group of people I hung around were some of the worst kind of people. They were the kind of people who liked to join in on the bullying. If they found out, who knows what might happen. I'll get bullied. You know, instead, I'll be the victim. You know, nobody wants that. Those kind of people are the most horrible that you can meet. The kind of people who have no shame and doubts about ganging up on someone. If those kind of people figure out our relationship, the kind of rumors they spread would spiral out of control. Okay, we have a choice. Um, we can tell them the truth. You know, that's kind of like extreme, I feel like. Or we can deny confession, don't say anything, or change the subject. I mean, these three seem to be the same option, to be honest, but I don't know if there's any subtle differences. Um, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to handle this. Uh, I'll say... Uh, let's, let's change the subject. Let's not talk about this. Let's dodge the question, basically. Well, instead of worrying about me, you should probably be more concerned over the upcoming exam tomorrow, right? I sighed in a tone which attempted to betray a sense of worry and concern. Oh, jeez, don't worry. Don't remind me. You're not even going to be near me to help me out. How am I ever going to figure out the answers this time? It's all over for me. Ah. At the frantic panic the male student has shown over the mere mention of the exam left other students to lightly laugh and chuckle over his concern. The conversation on Hosh Hoshino was put to rest. No one decided to ask any more questions about it. As if nothing had even happened, they began chatting again about whatever came to mind. Occasionally, they would purposely include me in such conversations. Uh, Slider, they are the top student in the entire class, respected by their teachers, great, and practically even the whole school. The grades are ranked first, incredibly attractive, and also very popular. Ah, uh, yes, <laughs> my high school experience. No, uh, no matter the gender, they seem to get along with everyone. Apparently, they're just <laughs> bisexual. No. Well, maybe not. That's, that's not what they meant. Anyway, um, at first, it seemed almost like fiction, if you will. I was the weak and frail child who spent most of their life growing up within the walls of a hospital room. However, somehow, I managed to become the type of model student others could only dream of being. I don't know. I feel like it's always different. I guess it's different in... Eastern countries, you know, I, I mean specifically, I mean, this, I think this is in Ch uh, in Chinese, so I, I'm assuming China, but like, I, I don't know, any, any like, uh, how do you describe it, like East Asian country, like Japan or, and like, uh, South Korea or whatever, I feel like, like, having good grades makes you popular, at least in anime, I always see that, but I always thought it was the opposite in the West, you know, in, in America, 
earlier, at least I always see, I always see on TV shows anyway. Um, like if you got good grades, you're like a nerd, and then you get beat up and put in lockers. You know, I mean that wasn't necessarily my experience. You know, but like, I don't know. I, I feel like you're not popular if you're smart. Is a thing. You're like a nerd. You know, you like maybe it's different these days, but it's kind of like the opposite. You know, it's kind of I feel like it's the opposite. You know. At least, in, I don't know, it's a stereotype and I only have one, you know, perspective to really glean from, which is my experience. Um, so I don't know if anyone else's experience is different, but like, but yeah, it's like the the hierarchy is like, the people who are popular are jocks, you know, the people who like do sports and whatnot, right? Usually those are the popular ones, but in, in Japan, at least in anime anyway, it's not the jocks, it's the, uh, the super, you know, straight A students for some reason. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's just weird to me. Anyway, uh, anyway, I'm that perfect model student and I must remain so. Or at least maintain that image I've been so desperate to keep. As for Hoshino, he's the exact opposite of me. The others, he's nothing more than an insignificant pest below their very feet. Contrary to popular belief, Hoshino does have his positives. For one, he's quite a smart student. However, his disability falls short as he's too meek and afraid to use it due to the negative environment surrounding him. He's introverted, was drawn to social contact, and nearly has an anxiety attack every time the teacher calls his name out of room to the class to answer a question. People think he has some sort of mental illness because of his great amount of anxiety. I mean, that is called, you know, the anxiety disorder. Anyway, he's uh, only come a handful of days to school. At this point, he's boring the line of suspension. Ah, yes, you know, this guy who's like a delinquent and never shows up to school. You, you know, it's, it's ironic how that's the opposite. I feel like it, it, I feel like it, again a lot of Western shows the the delinquent, you know, the or like the class clown or whoever, you know, uh, someone who's like really bad at like uh, class, but but otherwise is popular. That's usually the case in a lot of Western shows. It's kind of like the opposite apparently here. I don't know. Anyway, uh, but yeah, he apparently doesn't show up a lot. Uh, half of his time at school, he either spent reading alone by himself or being bullied by people like me. Haha, <laughs> I love bully people. I, I don't know. Apparently, I just do that, I guess. For example, sometimes we throw his textbook out the window. The teacher would then question why he didn't have it, while I held back a sinister, a sinister smirk watching close behind. Whenever I was in a bad mood, I would do things like pull his hair, choke his neck, and make him suffer an unbearable pain just to appease myself. Oh, yes. I'll just say this. I'm like a psychopath. What the heck? I mean, you know, I always do say kids are basically sociopaths, you know? They don't even have... They, like, they have a stunted emotional empathy. So, like, I feel like a lot of kids are just horrible and mean. Um, at least that's my experience anyway. Like, I don't know. It's like they, I feel like nobody had empathy, you know? And sometimes when people grow up, they still don't have empathy, you know? Isn't that messed up? Anyway, um... Uh, the bruises on his body would increase more and more each day that passed by. At some point, less of them were from me and rather from my classmates. Someone even once scribbled black ink on his school uniform. So up until now, he has been wearing his uniform to school. This, in return, forced him to become even more of an outlier amongst other students. Or at least, something like that. If you look at all things considered, I deserve to be the person who have been said to have a mental illness far more than Hoshino does. All he's done is live a quiet life. He hasn't disturbed or harmed anyone in any sort of way. That's all. Funnily enough, despite all of this, rather than me being isolated and harassed by everyone else, I ended up being him. This world is truly illogical. Well, you happen to be in the right place at the right time, I guess. It all started with a simple game during recess time. People would boo and make the loser of said game before the most stupid and impossible punishment. In the end, I managed to lose. So I said, then my, per then my punishment would be confessing to Hoshino. During lunchtime, I tried to get him to quickly reject me so I could give these idiots a conclusion and get this stupid thing over with. Who knew that the plan would somehow end up in failure? Why? Why does whenever I encounter Hoshino, nothing ever seems to go right? You know what? Never mind. I shouldn't say encounter. I brought all these problems onto myself after all. An unnameable anger filled my heart with rage. Oshino asked me to go with him after school. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, is it really important for me to meet up with him in the first place? Okay. Hmm. I don't know. 
I mean, let's see. What happens if I just, like... I mean, obviously you could play along. And maybe there could be a good ending, you know, to this story. Or you can be like, eh, whatever. I'm just gonna go home. <laughs> Who cares, you know? I'll just, I'll just follow, I'll just like, uh... I guess, follow the natural conclusion of the, the main character's personality. And he just seems to be like... An asshole, you know? So like, he's like, just a jerk. So like, why would he, you know... Why would we follow up on our promise? So we'll just go home. Who cares? No. No, it's not. It's not like we actually know each other that well anyways. We're not friends, family, acquaintances, or even anything really at this point. And most certainly not a couple either. Our relationship can only be called that of bully and their victim. It's as simple as that. If two people like that were to end up together, actually having a healthy and happy relationship would be impossible. Uh, I think we'll have to split up from here. Alright, see you tomorrow. He gave me a smile as soon as we made plans to meet up and have lunch at noon together the next day. Each person leaving separately as they went in opposite directions. Some of them went to their part-time jobs, while others went to go shopping in pairs. To be honest, I envy their amount of energy. For me, just going to school and studying each day had me nearly wiped out. You know, apparently, uh, I mean, it, it seems obvious, but like, According to the gay page, when you uh, name your character, apparently, you know, their gender is kind of like ambiguous. Uh, but I do feel like, I don't know, I feel like it's implied that it's kind of slanted towards you being a woman, however. Because, at least uh, I see in the tags anyway, apparently it's kind of reminiscent of Otome games as well. So it's kind of like that too. But I feel like it's, I don't know, canonically anyway, you're like a girl. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Anyway, but I guess it doesn't matter. Because I just noticed, you know, shopping in pairs. I mean, I don't know. I guess your friend group can, can include, you know, boys and girls. But uh, I feel like usually if you're going to be a bunch of bullies, <laughs> you'll probably be one gender, you know. I don't know. Anyway, that's the stereotype anyway. Um, I found myself walking home alone. I didn't mind it so much, however. I'd rather have a quiet walk home over taking the noisy bus any day. Now that I think about it, I guess in this way, I'm sort of like, oh, you know. Ah, why am I even thinking about him? It doesn't matter. It's probably already moved on to working on something else by now, not waiting for some silly date to happen. I try my best to shake away these irritating thoughts, so I look up towards the sky. As I leave the school, I couldn't help but think about how beautiful it looked in the evenings. In the light and blue skies, soft white clouds flow so carefreely. Or, so carefully? That's kind of a weird translation. So, uh, soft white clouds float so carefree, I guess. Carefreely. Carefreely? Is that even a word? I feel like it's made up. I don't know. Never heard of it before. Uh, the breeze whistles by and tickles my skin. Being here makes me feel like I've fallen into the gentle embrace of dusk. If only time could stand still, just for a moment, with my stand. Zawurdo. Um. As much as I pray the soothing feeling would last, the buzzing of my phone seemed to ruin the moment. The text message and the phone call seemed to pop up at the same time. The text message was from Hoshino. Not that that was too unexpected. In the past, I did give him my number, so I guess it's nothing too strange. However, the phone call was from my mother. She's the person who's most similar to me in this world, yet she still seems to hate me the most. Hmm, interesting. Um... Let's see, you can read the Hoshino's message, uh, answer your mother, or ignore both of them. I was just thinking, again, yeah, I'm trying to like, uh, we'll, we'll try different options later, maybe, depending if it affects anything, but I'm, try, I'm just trying to roleplay. You know, it's this weird, like, psychopath bully who's also having kind of like an identity crisis, you know, because they're like doing so well, but like, at the same time, they think it's weird <laughs> that they're doing so well, you know? Like a high-functioning psychopath, I don't know. Um, and apparently we don't like our mother, so... I mean, we don't like Koshino, supposedly. But uh, let's see, no both. And they just die already. I wish they would leave me alone. If they were dead, it'd make everything else so much easier. Okay. Ah, if only. It's all so annoying. It'd be better if they just disappeared, and I'd finally be able to breathe. No one would bother me ever again. 
Going silent, I simply muted my phone and tossed it into my bag. You know, this is very anti-social. This is anti-social. I mean, there's a mental illness called that, actually. Uh, anti-social personality disorders, I think it was called, or something like that. You know, I mean, a psychopath and sociopath. I mean, I kind of use those words um, synonymously. I used to think there was a distinction, but I think that's all made up. You know, it's like the, the, uh, there's always this like idea that sociopath and psychopath meant different things, but it's not backed up by any kind of research or science, really. If it was, it would be like really old, you know, science, I think. I think the proper term is just antisocial personality disorder. You know, just someone who's like, an asshole, basically, you know, this, that's what that means, right? Uh, let me tell you, is that what it's called? Antisocial personality disorder? I, I think that's what it's called, right? Yeah. I mean, basically, someone who's like, yeah. Who like, um, who's like the, you know, the Hollywood definition of psychopath, you know? Like, American Psycho, you know, that movie? <laughs> kind of like that. Um, I should lie down today. I think I'll need a good night's sleep after the, after the day. Taking one last breath, I hold my forehead in under exhaustion. The good news is that the horrible anger is finally starting to fade away. However, bad news is that the same stress and fatigue that plagued me have come back once more. I felt like my mind was being squashed and melted into nothing but a mere puddle. I try and think about what I should do now. You should go home, <laughs> a little voice whispers. You have to. Who knows what happened if you don't? <laughs> you know, it says like a little angel on my shoulder. And then, the, and then the devil says, no, no, what are you saying? Another voice seems to say, maybe you should just take a nap. Then you'll be able to forget all of this. Let it all go. Ah, just shut up. I'm not going to listen to either of you. Trying to breathe, I felt, my luck, uh, I felt like my lungs were on the verge of collapse. Uh, just calm down. Everything is going to be fine. I lied. Nothing is fine. Nothing will ever get better. At the time, I found myself knelt down on the ground, my hands desperate to cover my mouth as if to suppress the vomit piling up my throat. My whole body began to shiver almost uncontrollably. I thought I'd, I'd at least be able to skip dinner. But it seems I'm not even able to do that. If I want to be able to go to school the next day, then I have to eat something. I forced myself to go to the place I've been renting out and made some quick food. <laughs> renting out a place? Apparently, well, a, a mother can call us, but... Apparently we're renting our own place. <laughs> Despite this, the food I put in my mouth was simply spit out soon afterwards, my body rejecting the taste. My health condition is getting worse these days. I would be shocked if, if soon I would just end up dead. I sighed as I looked outside the window, nights already spread. I wonder what Hoshino could be doing. Perhaps he really is still stupidly waiting for me next to the school. It's strange, but I can actually imagine him doing such a thing. I mean, that's why he's a victim, I guess. <laughs> he, just, he just trusts people, I guess. <laughs> Not many people know this, but Hoshino was my childhood friend. Oh, there you go. There's the twist. By the way, we knew him before. Not only that, he was actually a good friend. He even saved my life once. But as I grew up, I slowly turned into the person I hated the most. Seeing Hoshino's face distorted in pain and hurting. At that time, I actually felt joy. I felt joy at the sight of being able to crush another person. Something in my mind said, Look, I'm not the worst one out there. After all, there are people like Hoshino. Although I couldn't admit it to myself at the time, I was the scub, not Hoshino. As reality rushes back to me, I found myself unable to get up. At some point, my body gave into the pressure of the weight beneath me, and I ended up falling to the floor. The vomit in my throat nearly ends up choking me to death. My vision began to flicker between the colors of black and red. Blood was scattered on the floor, crimson coating the earth. Suddenly, my lack of breathing became nothing compared to the unbearable pain. 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 It was as if a bug was gnawing away at my body, its sharp teeth sinking into my skin. As I realized what was happening, I came to understand going through a seizure alone was not good news. Worst thing is, the neighborhood I picked to rent out a place and specifically what has nearly no one in it. I made sure of it so that no one would notice when things like this would happen to me. Am I going to die? I can't say that I'm shocked. I haven't taken my medicine in a while, after all. I just didn't expect this would happen so soon. 
and all my senses tormenting me kept my mind wide awake. Coming to an understanding more than I wanted to, I realized I may truly be dying. The only thing I could feel at the moment was regret. It isn't because my life is coming to an end, however. Instead, it's because of that same person that keeps popping up inside my head. Hoshino. I feel regret because of Hoshino. But Hoshino doesn't need to hear my apologies. Who would ever hear such a thing from a fake scumbag like me? I'm too disgusting for anyone to want to hear what I have to say. I did to him what my mother did to me. And just as I would never forgive my mother for it, nor would he forgive me. Only when I die will it be enough to pay for what I've done to him. As I was lost in my thoughts, I waited for the everlasting sleep to consume me. Or rather, I was waiting for death. Drip, drip, drip. Drip. He's got that drip, you know? Isn't that like a slang term that Zoomers use? Like, you know, like clothes or something? Like fashion? Anyway. I woke up. Huh? How am I still alive? But I didn't wake, wake normally. A, a strange smell had woken me up. It smells like... I quickly paused my thoughts. Or I quickly, quickly paused the thought. I guess I was. I was just thinking how weird that sentence is, but... Hmm, I don't know. I guess it works. I quickly paused the thought. I don't, I, I don't normally say that, though. I'm pausing my thoughts. I mean, how would I... Say other say it otherwise. I would say like I, I did not finish my thought. You know, I guess I. I don't, anyway, my limbs felt numb. A cold sensation was biting in my fingers. I felt shocked upon finding myself lying on a soft, uh, soft mattress, and soon I could feel my eyes widen in surprise. How did I get here? As soon as I looked out the window, I remembered that it was supposed to be raining outside, moon glowing in the sky, and yet not a single star could be found. Still, the room remained shrouded in darkness. Oh, uh, hello, hello, Peep, by the way. Now, apparently, we passed out because of our disease, but somehow we survived. You know, there was a sound effect that might have been, you know, I might have been talking over it, but there was a sound effect of someone opening the door, I guess. Who would open our door? You know, our mother? Seems like our, there was, it's implied that our mother doesn't, you know, not only does she not like us, but she also abused us. <laughs> you know, this is what it seems like. So, I don't know. Uh, so, you have another choice and get up or just don't do anything. <laughs> I feel like I've been choosing all the options of like, of apathy. I feel like so. Ah, uh, whatever. Let's just get some sleep. Ah, forget it. I'm tired. Just as I was about to lay back down, ready to go to sleep, my phone began dinging almost endlessly next to the pillow inside me. Someone began sending countless upon countless photos to me. To confirm that what I was seeing was real, I rubbed my eyes for a second. The more I looked at them, the creepier it got. The first picture was of me walking to school in the morning. I was in the middle of yawning. The photo was called, uh, Cider didn't sleep well today. The second picture was of me eating lunch alone on the rooftop. This was named, uh, Slider's Lunch. <laughs> there was a picture of me standing by the window at night, gazing upon the starry sky. I couldn't sleep due to my illness that night. It read, I can't seem to fall asleep tonight, just like me. There was also pictures of me losing my temper at something, shouting in anger. Cider's upset! And pictures of me when I was sad and depressed. Uh, Cider's unhappy. And then, the last shot was of my, pic uh, of my sleeping face. It was titled, My Favorite Picture. No slide. <laughs> okay. In the photo, I was softly asleep at night with something in my hand. Something that shouldn't be there. It was a blood-stained kitchen knife. Blood-stained kitchen knife? Hmm. Suddenly, I could feel the cold touch of metal in my palm. In horror, I hold it up only to see the very same knife I've been holding in the photo. Quickly, I switch on a lamp beside me, panic invading my every thought. I saw puddles of blood staining my clothes, hands, and the bed which had not yet dried up. Despite the sheer amount of blood, I found no wounds in my body. It's blood. Whose is it? I hope this isn't Chris's blood. <laughs> I found out that answer very quick. A visible crimson stain on the floor trailed towards my direction. Or to be more exact, trailed under my direction. Dragged under the bed lie marked stain of blood 
leading towards it from what could be someone dragging themselves out crawling across the floor. Hmm. Uh, nah, that's okay. Uh, no thanks. I'll leave you to the police. Uh, I don't want to look. Uh, I don't want to see it. That's okay. No, I don't want to look. Please, don't make me look. No, 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 no. Please. Okay. <laughs> actually, it's not actually a choice. Never mind. All right. Let's under the bed. I didn't seem to show. I just kind of paused. I gasp. Feelings of panic yet sadistic excitement both flooded me at once. You know, apparently, the, yeah, the protagonist loves hurting people, so. I found myself getting out of bed. My body resting on its side as I peer under it, lying on the blood, stained and sticky floor. Or, no, lying on the blood stained and sticky floor, rather. The hyphen, you know, confuse me. My face began growing hotter as my breathing accelerates. It's hot. It's so hot, I feel like I'm gonna start burning. It's that same feeling that a high school student gets when they're about to confess to their crush. Cheeks blown a scorching red. Ah, so this is what he planned. Just as I lay my eyes upon the sight, I watch as it watches me. At the opposite side under the bed, its gaze seems to burn holes into mine. Bad end. The monster under the bed. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it's Hoshino. I, that would be my first guess. Because otherwise, yeah, I guess he's been stalking us and somehow found us on the floor. And then somehow we killed him in a daze, maybe. He just didn't remember that. Hmm. Oh, and there's a little bit more. Even though we got an ending screen. Uh... I'm assuming this is the perspective of, uh, of Hosh uh, Hoshiro? Hoshino? Is it Hoshino? Is it Hoshiro or Hoshino? Now you're confusing me, Azrael. I thought it was Hoshino. Uh, I, lovely tuck I, I lovingly tuck the hand of the knife into Slider's hand, holding their empty hand gently within my own. Then, with my other hand, I grab their hand which held the knife. I then pierce it into my own abdomen. Blood. Blood. Blood, blood, blood. Blood, 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 blood. Until my pain goes numb, until I get dizzy. Until my blood splatters red across uh, Slider's clean bed, I continue to hold his hand. I'm happy. It hurts, but I'm so happy. Before I came into this room, and I wanted to do something, ah, now I remember. I wanted to kill you. I was desperate to see you once I saw that you were curled up and unmoving. It scared me. I thought you'd been taken away from me. If I were to die, I wanted to at least be at your, at your hand. The way you have been tortured by the other pain made you look lovely. Have you ever heard of it? Some say abuse is a form of love. I always thought that was simply a lie fabricated by perpetrators. Per 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 perpetrators. No, perpetrators with horrible excuses. But even you are abusing me. And you're different. You're the only one who's different. Or at least that's what I thought. But you've betrayed me. If I can't convince myself that what you're doing is for love anymore, then I don't want to go on living. I've known. I've known it from the start. Your confession to me wasn't real. It was all just some game, a joke, a bet. It didn't matter to you. So that's when I changed my mind. I was going to let you die, at least not before I was able to give you my true confession. You must live in order to accept it. With the ex excessive blood loss, I began to feel like a paper bag slowly ripping apart. I want to be closer to you. I couldn't stay here. I needed to be near you. In the end, I found myself at ease under the bed. The dark and cramped space felt just right for me. I felt safe. And with you sleeping peacefully above me, I finally found where it was meant to be. Even if lying on the hardcore, uh, ha hardcore, no. Even if lying on the hard, cold floor wasn't comfortable at all, uh, for the sake, uh, for the sake of Slider, I wait even just a bit longer. You know, it's just always weird to say my own, you know, say my name, you know, it's just weird. <sighs> Hurry. 
Please hurry up, please. Wake up quickly and find me. I want you to see me before I die. Ah, uh, yes. A feeling of pleasure runs throughout my body as I bleed to death. <laughs> I could feel the smile forming on my face. It's been a long time since I remember being so happy. Whether at home or at school, I always felt so dull. Everything is just so boring. My patience was at its limit. At that point, everything began to feel, uh, feel so tiring. Everyone is trash, including me. Everyone is simply trash. Except for you. You're my friend. My one and only friend. Although, to be honest, you're more than just a friend. I like you. You're as good as you are evil. You're as gentle as you are cruel. Even these parts of you contradicting one another, I can't help but cherish them just like every other part of you. I wish I could hate you, but I still like you too much to do so. I'm curious, if you become a murderer, what things will you do to hide it? I'm so happy. Now you'll always remember me, right? You always remember my death. Remember that your hands are one stain of my blood. I wanted to be engraved in your memory, so that way you'll never forget. I like you, and I love you more than anyone else in this world. After you learn the truth, this will be our confession. A secret shared only between the two of us. No one else will ever know. Alright, there you go. <laughs> okay. Low epilogue, I guess. Congratulations! You got one of the codes with a true ending! 99. Alright, well, hold on. I'm gonna write that down, I guess. Was it 99? Uh, bad ending 1 equals 99. See you next time! Alright, okay. So, that's one of the bad endings, uh, but there's more to get. Because, you know, there's more choices to make. Let's see what our mom has to say. I took a deep breath as I answered my mother's call. Mom. You? You're still able to answer your phone. I thought you would be able to since you haven't done so until now. Why have you come back home yet? So you just told me one day you were going to study, then you suddenly decided to move into some other household. But at home is it not quiet enough for you to study? Tell me. Ah, starting again. I thought she understand my reason for leaving home. It seems she doesn't un understand me that well after all. Her hysterical questioning only seems to drag on. A few curses here and there being sputtered off from her mouth. She say things such as, Who raised you? You're so ungrateful. You put your father to shame. I shut my mouth and listened quietly. Also, you didn't take your medicine, did you? Taking it is important. You don't get sick again, do you? How many times have I told you that you'll regret it if you stop taking it? You know what I regret? Having to become a madman just like you. That's when I finally said it. The one thing I've been holding back for so long. Like the voice had been knocked out of her, my mother's fierce tone suddenly became like that of a helpless and pathetic creature. If it weren't for the horrible headache I had now, perhaps I would have been amused by her reaction. Please, I'm just, I'm trying to think of you. Why can't you see how hard I try for you? My mother begged, hiccups in her tone. You could almost hear the tears sliding down her face. She acted as if I'd been bullying her, like I was the monster here. I love you. You know that, right? You should know that you're all I, that I have. Why couldn't you be more like your father? Why can't you understand my feelings? I can only imagine the look at my mother's face when she mentions my father. There's almost a trace of sadness, yet unhindering love within her heart. To be honest, I'm jealous of my father. He's never been faced with the horror that is my mother's unconditional yet morbid love. However, with me, that's the only kind of love I receive. She treats me like she's worried but then leaves me to rot of cold indifference. She'd ask me to list out the full description of my day, from when it started to when it ended. Sometimes, if she was unsatisfied, she, she hit me, pulled my hair, slapped my face, and threw anything she could at me. She wanted to make me regret whatever I'd done wrong. Every time she asked herself, why'd I give birth to such a horrible child? And each time, in return, I have to convince myself of this. It's me who's done wrong. I'm the bad one. I'm the one who's not sweet enough, not good enough. And it's all my fault. 
But she finally coming to understand that, she calmed down. It was almost as if she turned into an entirely different person. As if pitying me, she caressed the scars and bruises she left on my body in horror. She cried and apologized to me almost endlessly. She said, I'm so sorry, please forgive me. I understand I only do this because of my illness. I never want to hurt you. But I just don't get it. If that's the case, then why couldn't she try and understand how I feel? Why could she try to be considered of the same, or to be considered of the person forced to carry that same burden as her? Couldn't she at least try to feel sorry for me, the one who inherited that same illness that she had? Why was she unable to be accepting the growing resemblance I have to her? All she could do was despise it. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so this kind of explores more of the abuse that the protagonist has. Very, you know, I mean, it's an abusive relationship, you know? This is kind of like a very uh, classic case of like, of like a toxic relationship. Um, hmm. All right, let's say this. You're just using me to pretend I'm someone else. Mom, are you really still making such lame excuses? You're just seeing me as a shadow of my father. Like I'm just some sort of substitute for him, but he's not even alive anymore. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, that seems to be an implication. You know, that, yeah. Can't you see? I'm just a child. You're a tall child who can't take all this pain away from you anymore. All you've been doing is shifting your pain onto me. Shifting all those negative feelings to me instead of dealing with them yourself. That way, you have the illusion that someone shared those feelings with you. That they were going through that same horrible situation you were. Do it all just so you wouldn't have to wallow your own self-misery any longer. What? Did I say something that was wrong? The sound of clicking along with that familiar tune trails on afterwards. She's hung up. I didn't want to admit it, but my, my, my mother is similar to me in this way. Hearing the words you don't want to hear from someone else and running away to hide. It's exactly what I do. Huh. No wonder why my mother hates me. I'm that exact part of herself which she des despises so much. Okay. And that seems to be the same, actually. It's like... Uh, 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 and probably the same ending. Alright. Let's see. Well, it seems like no matter what choices I pick after avoiding the meeting, it will always end up uh, with that, you know, with that bad ending, it seems like. So instead, let's actually meet up with Hoshino this time. Maybe we don't, you know, like uh, ghost him, basically. All right. Uh, see you tomorrow. I'm going to the library. I wave goodbye to my classmates. They gave me a smile as soon as we made plans to meet up and have lunch at noon together the next day. Each person leaving separately as they went in opposite directions. We planned to meet up before he disappeared from the last class. He should be here. Surely enough, he showed up. Wherever lies in any sort of book or album, there's also lies or there. I can't speak. Wherever lies any sort of book or album, there also lies Hoshino. He'd always be spending his time in such a way. Oh yeah, I mean I guess that makes sense. But also, he'd always be spending his time in a way such as this. Oshino scribbled upon the pages of his notebook with great force. Almost as if he rather... Yeah, oh, I can't speak for some reason. I, don't, I, I feel like I'm reading these wrong. Anyway, Oshino scribbled upon the pages of his notebook with great force. Almost as if rather than holding a pen, he'd been tearing into the pages of a steel knife. His complexion appeared pale as ever, as his attention was also lacking to the environment surrounding him. Hence why he didn't even seem to notice me approaching him. Okay. Uh, well, what is he writing? Curiosity may have killed the cat, but it wouldn't be able to kill me. <laughs> you know, the, the top 10 things to say before you get killed. Um, huh? What in the world is he writing about? His scribble-like handwriting made the sentences look practically illegible. I couldn't tell if he had done it on purpose or if it was merely an accident. Barely being discernible, the only thing I could tell about the first part was that it was a rhyming poem. The other part was heavily detailed descriptions about, most likely, his own emotions. It was probably how he expressed himself without needing to tell anyone. As I skimmed the scribble type of writing spot across the paper, I took notice of the last sentence of the, uh, or I took notice of the last of the sentence reading. 
I'm so tired. I try to take a closer look. Somehow, Hoshino managed to notice me behind him. Maybe he heard me. I noticed his shadow grow ever so slightly taller in passing moments. Regardless, he slightly shook at noticing me and slowly raised his head towards me in confusion. Yeah, as I mentioned before, he has like Medusa hair for some reason. He also has a bit of a fang, you know, I don't know, it's like, I'm assuming it's symbolic, you know, rather than literal. Anyway. Um, our eyes made contact. He was silent as he sat breathless, staring up at me. I too remained silent as I stared down at him. Three, two, one. Ah! As I slowly counted my mind once the number had reached one, Hoshino's voice exploded with shock all across the quiet library. Uh, um... As he began to scream, I quickly covered my hands over his mouth as to suppress the sound, hoping not to draw any more attention than he already had. As I covered his mouth for a few seconds longer, I waited as I expected he was going to either do something like bite my hand or stab it with his pen. He did seem terrified after all the moments. However, he instead decided to try and restrain himself from pulling self-defense techniques on me. In the end, he didn't end up hurting me in the slightest, contrary to what I was thinking was going to happen. I frowned after his screaming had finished. You can't make such a ruckus in the library. Hoshino's eyes seemed to tremble with panic as he stared at me. They seemed to be trying to convey to me, is that really a problem here? His cheeks flushed a cherry red almost instantly as he stumbled awkwardly out of his seat. He tried to get up as soon as possible but ended up tripping several times in the process. Now just stay still and try to breathe. Don't worry, it'll be fine. Please, just stay, so stay calm. I tried to emphasize the word please, however, it ended up sounding more like a command than reassurance. I waited for a little while until he decided to settle down. At last, he had finally calmed himself. At least on the outside, that is. You feel better now? I asked. Well, you know, chuckle slightly in a gloomy way as I continued to move my hands away from his face. As my touch left his cheeks, his body began to tremble once more. You. Please don't surprise me like that next time. He said while gritting his teeth. However, the expression was not akin to anger or blame, but rather a sense of fear. I understand why Hoshino is so anxious. Something similar to this happened once. Hoshino was so frightened by me, he nearly stabbed the tip of his pen into my eye out of shock and terror. Perhaps he was afraid he would accidentally do it again. You could have been in danger. If you had, I don't know what I would have done. If I ever hurt you, I... Oshino lowers his head, a uh, lower lip trembling. He continued to murmur something under his breath. It was difficult for me to distinguish what he was saying. Save the game. Promise not to do that to him again. Pat his head and try and cover him. Don't say anything or punch him. <laughs> it's a very extreme choice. Um... Sure, well, we're just gonna... You know, uh, boys will be boys, right? We're just gonna playfully punch him on the shoulder very lightly. And don't worry about it. As I pick this option. Raising my arms, I put all my strength into whamming Hoshido with my fist on his head. Oh. Is that more like, it's like a comedy routine, you know? Is that kind of like bop? I don't know. Uh, he rapidly trembled once I hit him. His hands covered his body as if to shoot himself from any other hits I had thrown his way. This was a reflex he adapted the more he got beaten up. Oh, maybe he's, yeah, maybe he's a real punch. Yeah, I think it's a real punch. Ow. Now do you see? It's easy for me to harm you than for you to harm me. Do you think I'm incapable of hurting you? All of a sudden, Hoshino approached me with a frightening posture and heavy steps. I haven't seen him become this emotional in such a long time. If you want me to hurt you, then I'll do it. I can do that for you. i do anything for you. Here, I'll prove it to you. Then get on with it already. Put up your fists. Time to fight. No, I, I said, anger festering inside me like the rotten venom of a snake. I grabbed Hoshino by the collar and... As a result, the librarian sauntered over to us, unable to bear the noise we had making. Uh, she grabbed us both by the shoulders with a grim expression on her face. If Hoshino had immediately grabbed my wrist after that, I might have been the first student in school history to have been pushed to the ground by a teacher. 
Okay. I'm really sorry, miss. I bowed to the teacher to show the depth of my apology. I usually wouldn't make such stupid mistakes like this. I blame Hoshino. This dumb mess is all his fault. He's, it's his fault for being so punchable. I guess. Huh? Isn't Hoshino gonna apologize too? Rather than do anything about it, Hoshino simply kept his gaze trapped to the side, preferring to remain quiet and clean to me instead. Hoshino, you have to apologize too, you know, even though I punch you in the head, I guess. Once I reminded him of this, he did listen and end up apologizing, but he didn't truly put that much focus and meaning into it. It was almost like he had just woken up from a dream. He looks at me as if in a trance. It seems this guy will only acknowledge my existence in this world. This is probably why he doesn't have any other friends. Only the times when the two of us were alone together was he able to speak more fluently, become relaxed and allow himself to be comfortable with physical contact with one another. What in the world? This guy should hate me, not feel comforted by me. Sometimes I feel like he really is crazy. But we should go. Since this is a date, we should find a place together where we can make long-lasting memories. <laughs> you know, of me punching you in the face over and over again. No, I'm our time together is precious after all. Hoshino says in a strangely serious tone. He tugs at the edge of my sleeves as he heads towards the exit. He does have a point. Wandering around the school for a few hours really wasn't the most interesting thing in the world. The only question is, where does Hoshino plan on going? He patiently waits for me to join him as we begin to walk out of the library. I wonder where we're going. A cafe, maybe? Quite a popular date location, after all. You can't go wrong with that kind of choice. Or maybe not. Maybe we're going to the park. It's a nice and quiet place to spend time outdoors. It's great for relaxing, too. Especially when the weather is warm enough. Hmm, no. That doesn't seem like it's the place, either. But nothing I can feel of thinks, or, hmm, nothing I can think of feels like it's going to be the right one. I admit that I can't think of any places besides those, however. Uh, do you want to come over to my house? Oshino plainly made that suggestion. What? Well, I was just thinking. We haven't been there in over a year. The house and my family has changed a little, and I thought you might be curious. Some do you? Before he could finish his sentence, I reached out and ruffled the soft tuss of Hoshino's hair. Despite his skin being covered, each scratch mark has still not been healed. Each wound still remains scarred, revealed by my very eyes. Huh. How careless. As long as he stays here, that always remains the same, no matter how much he changes over time. Oh, and when I say he, I mean Hoshino's uncle. Hoshino's been horrified of him ever since he was just a little kid. I'm not sure why. At least when he was a child, at least. For me, I can remember the place being almost like a second home to me at some point. Before he was 10 years old, Oshino was just a normal boy living a happy life. He had a stable and wealthy family, most of the money and house of which had been inherited by their ancestors. Oshino's parents had actually passed away fairly early on, but despite this, he still had a happy childhood. He was raised mainly by his uncle, along with his aunt, almost as he was their own son. He was highly loved and cared for. I've seen the him, or I've seen the him? No, I've seen him and his uncle together. His uncle wasn't the greatest of words, but I could tell how much he cared about him. His aunt and uncle were very kind people. The first day I met Hoshino, unlike now, he had nothing to do with the word gloomy. To this day, I can still remember what he was like at that time. He was a gentle child with the brightest smile. He shined like the stars. Did you guess it? Yes, it's strange compared to what he's like now, but uh, how did he turn out this way? His uncle, in a bad mental state, was introduced to a strange church by some shady people who had known at the time. Oh no. Freaking join a cult. To put it simply, he'd been brought into a cult. Depressingly, this cult didn't just preach words about their beliefs. They are more harmful than that. The family seemed to crumble apart after this, a number being done to their financial state along with it. The cult would give drugs to cure their members of sin, or rather to more easily keep them as devoted followers. After that, it only took two months to take who was once a loving husband and turn him into a madman. 
someone who only craved the medicine the cult would provide. You know, just just drug dealers. You know, that's just what they are. However, luckily, it seemed his uncle had snapped out of this. Despite that, however, the couple had decided to divorce as they were too troubled by what had just happened, and Hoshino was soon taken away to live with his aunt. His aunt and uncle both went to live in separate parts of the city and start a new life. However, what Hoshino and his aunt didn't know was that while this happened, his uncle had been dragged into the cult once more, and this time they had a plan. It was truly a pity what happened to his aunt. Crazy men of the cult had stormed up at their door that day. Hoshino's uncle was there too. He attacked his ex-wife while the men of the cult yelled in horror about how they'd been forced to kill their own wives. Okay. <laughs> I really not meant it when it happened after that. That's very violent. Also, what does that even mean, you know? Oh no, I'm stabbing you. Oh no, I'm being forced with this hand, with this really sharp knife. I'm stabbing you over and over again. I'm so horrified of murdering you, but I, apparently I can't stop. You know, that's what that sentence read to me. It's like, oh no, I guess I have to kill you. I, don't, I, can't, I can't help it, you know? I don't know if that would fly well in, you know, in the court of law. Anyway. Uh, why do I say this like I saw it? Well, it's because I did, and took plenty of photos. Now, I was with Hoshino during that day, and I had grabbed Hoshino, who at the time was sobbing and desperately trying to inch towards his aunt and uncle, I'm not sure he would be able to run away in time and call the police. If I'd stayed there any longer, that idiot would have ended up in a situation just as bad as his uncle. Afterwards, the man of the became even more deranged after what had happened. A lot of the additional becoming self-harmful, they were later sent to get medical treatment because of it. Luckily, the property has still remained intact. There, Hoshino lived alone with only the savings left behind from his dead parents. Hmm, I wonder what happened exactly. What, um, I'm not sure. Like, I, you know, supposedly his uncle, you know, fell into the cult again and they all decided to go together to kill his ex-wife, right? But that kind of also implied that the uncle died too and the men also killed the uncle. I'm not sure. Or either, he, either that or he went to jail, but you know. Um, I was the only one left in his life. Since then, he's distanced himself from other people. His cheerful personality had been burned to dust. From then on, he decided to rely on me and me alone. Regardless of what happened. After a few years, the man who committed an unforgivable sin had been released from prison. Oh, okay, no, he did go to prison, yeah. Okay. Which makes sense. When he arrived home, it seemed that he'd begun to abuse Hoshino. What the heck? I mean, yeah, that's interesting. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I guess I, I'm assuming this is in China, right? Because again, the original translation of this game, I think, was in China, in Chinese. How does that work? You freaking she, he murdered him or someone, you know? Do you get released from jail that quickly in China to kill someone? I don't know. I mean, I do hear how human rights, you know, in that country is not exactly prioritized. Uh, uh, I can't say the word prioritized. Prioritized? That's not right. Prioritized? 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 I can't say that word for some reason. Um, anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, human rights are not prioritized in, in China necessarily. I mean, anyway. Um, Alright, well, uh, Cider? That's when I realized how deeply my mind had wandered. Wandered? Wandered. I, there's a few typos in this game, if you like. No, it's mostly okay, but anyway. Um, yeah, but this idea my mind had wandered, not wandered, wandered. It took me a second to snap out of it as I'd been so lost in thought. However, I was taken aback when, when my awareness returned to me. When did Hoshino get so close? I stumbled back a few steps, but he reacted quickly as he grabbed my wrist. His expression was serious. Slider, are you okay? You're not feeling well. This bench is over there. You can sit down and rest. I can take care of you. I gasped as I was taking out my thoughts. I ignored his ramblings and concerns, rather focused on what I would answer to the questions he asked earlier. 